Hi there, it's Florence here and today I'm back with another special episode of my knitting video podcast. For today's episode I have brought along this box. This is the box containing all of the socks that I have knitted within the last year. I think this is just over 12 months worth of sock knitting and I have 17 pairs in here. Can you see them? Today I will be going over every one of the 17 pairs of socks in this box. I will be talking a little bit about the patterns, a little bit about the yarn. I'm not going to go into a lot of depth on anything just because I probably won't get through the whole year worth of sock knitting in a reasonable amount of time if I do. But hopefully I can at least give a quick overview of each piece. As usual, before I start that, I will mention what I'm wearing. This lovely cardigan is knitted from a pattern by Lena Homosamsa, I believe. It's called the Peacock Cardigan and it is a really fun pattern that I very much enjoy knitting and I strongly recommend. It's a great beginner's introduction to lace if you haven't done much lace knitting before. And the yarn that I used for this was some Korean yarn that was gifted to me by a friend. It's called Argo Superfine Merino and I held it with one strand of Izzia Alpaca 1 to get it up to the DK weight required for the pattern. As usual, my Ravelry will be linked in the description and if you check my Ravelry, you'll be able to find out more details about the yarn and exact colours that I use for all of my projects, including the cardigan and all of the socks. I'm not going to go through these socks in any particular order. Um, I'm not sure I could remember chronological order even if I tried, so I will just start going from one corner of the box and work my way across. I do have my laptop at the ready because no way am I going to remember the designer for each of these pairs of socks. So yeah, I suppose I will just jump into it. Pair of socks number one. These socks were knitted from a pattern by Yuka, which is going to be the case for many of the socks in this box actually. Yuka is my favourite sock designer. She releases patterns pretty much exclusively for socks and they are brilliantly written and really varied. This pattern is called Humu Humu and I feel like the dark colour of the yarn means you can't really appreciate the cables as much as you should. These are asymmetric cabled socks. So each sock individually is asymmetric, but the two socks are mirror images of each other, so when you wear them they do form a symmetrical pair. Here are the cables on one side and the other side. These socks are knitted toe up. I used Regia Premium Merino Yak for this particular pair. I don't remember the colour, as I said, all of the colours will be listed in the description. Something to note about this sock pattern is that it is basically a one size sock pattern. The cables are only charted for one size, so if you have particularly large or small feet you might want to bear that in mind. With that being said, I do have pretty large feet, I very often knit the largest size that a sock pattern comes in, and I find these work okay for me. They look pretty okay and I really do like this yarn. It's very thick and sort of plush feeling and the cables look really beautiful in it, even though they would have probably stood out more if I picked a slightly lighter colour. Here's one more close up so you can see. It just has a regular slip stitch heel flap. And even when the pattern tells you to do something different for the toe, I always just do a wedge toe. I find it fits me just fine, I've never really had any problems with it. And so all my socks are knitted that way. Pair of socks number two. This is actually the most recent pair of socks that I've added to this box. These are knitted from my own pattern. This pattern is called the Petal Drop Sock and you can find it on my Ravelry. The pattern has codes available so you can get it half off or completely for free. You'll find them all on the Ravelry page so if you'd like a free sock pattern you're welcome to try this one out. These socks are also knitted in Regia Premium. This is Regia Premium Bamboo I think. Colour is number two Natta. See, I remember this because I just finished these ones off. They are knitted cuff down and they have this super easy lace pattern all over. Pattern comes in two sizes and the heel flap is just a regular slip stitch heel flap. I also have a full video tutorial for these on my channel, so if you haven't knitted fancy socks before, this will probably be my suggested place to start just because I do demonstrate all of the steps um, and if you would like some video guidance, it's out there. I obviously haven't worn these socks so much since they are newer, so I can't really speak for the wear on the yarn, but they look pretty immaculate so far at least. Oh, and these are knitted on 2.25mm needles. Most of my socks are knitted on 2.25mm needles, it is my preferred sock knitting needle size, although that last pair, the Homo Homo socks, they were knitted on 2.5mm needles because, as I said, the pattern only comes in one size and I do have slightly larger feet. 
Anyway, I've spoken enough about that pair, so I'll move on to the next pair. And this is, I think, the oldest pair in the box, actually. This is the first pair of socks that I knitted going through my current sock knitting phase just over a year ago. These are called the Erica socks, and they are found in the 52 Weeks of Socks book. Here they are in the book. The pattern is by Anya Hoyman. I think the patterns from this book are available in Division on Ravelry, do correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I do strongly recommend these books. If you enjoy knitting fancy socks, both of these books have an excellent selection of different sock patterns in them. Um, there's something in there for everybody. This pair in particular, I feel like it's a really common first pair of socks to knit from this book. I know quite a few people who got this book and promptly knitted this pair of socks out of the 52 in the book. And for good reason, they're very pretty. I will try and open a sock up so you can see the design better. You can see it has this leaf-like lace pattern down the front of the sock, and the back of the sock is just plain. Mine definitely look a little bit worse for wear. These have been worn so much. I think because they are such a wearable colour um, and a really simple design, you can just throw them on with pretty much anything and they look really, really cute. The yarn that I used for this was Phil Colonna Arbetta in the colour Marzipan. It is my favourite colour that Phil Colonna make. It's a very pretty creamy beige, which looks lovely for socks because it's light, but it's not white enough to show discoloration and wear, like another pair of socks that I will show later. These were knitted on 2.5mm needles, because it was before I switched over to using 2.25mm needles most of the time, and they are knitted cuff down. It's a really quick project. There is no uh, textured heel flap, this just uses a stockinette heel flap. If I was knitting them again, I would probably substitute one in. But something fun about these socks is that I used the second ball of Arvata to knit maybe two or three rows on the second sock, just at the toe. So if you have smaller feet than me, I have about EU size 41 feet, pretty large feet. Um, if you have smaller feet, you should be able to get this pair of socks out of 50 grams, which makes it a really affordable project if you do choose to use the Phil Colonna Arvetta or something similar that comes in 50 gram balls. I really love this pattern and I would definitely recommend it to anybody interested in starting knitting lace socks. I recommend this book a lot and I think this is a particularly good place to start. Okay, this is another older pair. These are the cinnamon socks and they are again by Yucca. This is the first pair where I'm going to have to get my Ravelry out to look up details. Okay, so these are the cinnamon socks by Yucca and I knitted these in the yarn Novita Venla. It's a very affordable and very standard wool nylon blend, nothing special, um, and I used the colour 606. It's a very standard beige colour nothing particularly special. You can see the pattern on the sock. So it has a twisted rib, for, or half twisted rib I guess, for the cuff and for the back of the leg and also onto the heel flap. It's all continuous, which is the sort of very pretty detail that Yoko really frequently includes in her patterns and that I like a lot. And then this pattern on the front is not done with cables. I've forgotten the word for the technique, which is very annoying because I do, I do know it. It's the one where you knit into a stitch five rows below or something like that and then like pull the loop up in front of your work. What is it called? I've talked about it on this channel numerous times before. I'll put the name here. Um, I, I'm just having a, a bit of a brain block and can't figure it out. This is again knitted toe up, which is not my favourite. I'm pretty sure these were supposed to have more of a rounded toe, but I just knitted a wedge toe because I find it really fiddly increasing every row right after casting on top socks. Because they're toe up, I don't find the fit is quite so great on me, and you can see that top edge does flare out, but overall I have worn them a lot. I think the reason I reach them so much is because this is a yarn that I really feel is very sturdy, so I'm not worried about wearing it if I'm going to be walking a lot on a particular day. Something else to note about this yarn is it does sort of have a plasticky feeling to it, like, it has a pretty standard amount of nylon, I won't say 25%, something like that. But it does kind of have little plasticky strands in it that you can really feel. So it's definitely not my favourite. But yeah, these have been worn a bunch and they're showing pretty minimal wear. So the yarn does have that going for it, at least. Okay, here is a pair that is slightly different. This is another newer pair. These are the Amber Socks and they are from the second 52 Weeks of Socks. Here they are in the book. The pattern is by Vera Vellamecki. 
Now these are, I think, DK weight socks. I think I mentioned when I was talking about these socks in the podcast episode at the time, that it was slightly unclear what the yarn thickness recommended was for this pattern. But I actually ended up making the smallest size, which as I said, I have pretty large feet, so that's not like me. And I also ended up sizing down the needle size. So I used three millimeter needles to knit these because that left me with the stitch count and needle size that I normally use for DK weight socks. And so I knew it would fit well. For this, I used Rico Superba Alpaca Luxury Sock, which is a very thick and fluffy alpaca wool nylon sock yarn. That's in the light gray color. And then in order to bulk it out to a DK weight, and also because I know that this alpaca luxury socks sort of not even pills, but just sheds alpaca fiber horribly because I've used it for a jumper before, I did hold it with mohair to help keep it all uh, together a little bit better. The mohair that I used was mixed, I think. Like I used up various scraps of cream mohair that I had lying about since the colors are all pretty similar and so they are mostly interchangeable. I think it's mostly drops but there's bits of other stuff in here too, I believe. These were a really fun and quick knit. You can knit them up over a weekend with no problems. They have a half twisted rib cuff, and then they sort of alternate between these sections of broken rib and then rows of eyelets in between. It's a very easy pattern that you pick up very quickly, so you don't need to look at the pattern as you're working on them. Very repetitive, but really fun. I love the texture that it gives the finished sock, and as you can see, they just have a regular slip stitch heel flap as well. I am a big fan of DK weight socks. I really did enjoy this particular pair. I can't comment on the wear very much as I haven't worn them that much. I knitted them before the summer, and now we're at the end of the summer, I guess. So I haven't had them throughout a colder season, and so I can't really, yeah, comment on how well they've worn, but they look really cute at least. Pair number six, and I feel like I'm not moving fast enough to get through all of these in a reasonable amount of time. This is another pair of socks from a pattern by Yuka. This pattern is called Komarebi, and so it's a leaf pattern. It has all over lace, and the cool thing about this lace is it does go all the way up to the end of the toe. There's no stockinette toe, which I think is really pretty. These are knitted toe up. I used, I think, 2.5 millimeter needles, I guess from looking at them. And these are definitely a bit of a squeeze to get over my feet. I'm not sure exactly what it is about top socks that make them so fiddly for me to put on. Maybe it's just the way the heel's constructed. Uh, I don't think it is the tight bind off because I don't generally find the bind off to be too tight. But yeah, it's a recurring issue. The yarn that I used for these is from San Nisgan. It's called Sisu. And the colors don't have names on the packaging, so I will put the colour number in the description. I don't wear these so much partly because of the colour. It's a very bluey green colour and it's not as muted as I thought it was when I ordered it online. I definitely reach for the most colourful of my socks the least, which is a shame because these are a really pretty pattern and because the yarn has a lovely texture. It's not too rough but it feels really sturdy. So this is another sock that I do feel comfortable putting on, um, even if I'm going to be walking around a lot in boots. The heel flap is, I think, an eye of partridge heel flap. And I know I've said that a couple of the lace patterns on socks that I've showed in this video are particularly beginner friendly. I wouldn't say that this one is. The charts can just be a little bit confusing in some places. So this is one probably for someone who's knitted lace socks before. As I said though, all of Yuka's patterns are great. I recommend all of them and this one is no exception. Looking ahead in my box of socks, the next two are both super sock patterns as well. This one is called Juniper. It is an all over twisted rib sock with this interesting sort of twisted double moss stitch on the leg. The twisted rib goes all the way to the toe. Again, it's a frequent detail in Yuka's sock patterns and it obviously requires a little bit of extra thought, so I think that's really cool. And then it has a contrast eye cord bind off, which looks kind of messy and like it flies out a lot when I hold the sock up like this, but once you're wearing it it's not a problem at all. Now I knitted these socks toe up in Cascade Heritage Solids. I did a poll on my Instagram story about the sock yarn that you guys prefer. Um, this one did really well, I think because I do have quite a lot of American viewers and this one is easily available in the US. I find this sock yarn is very soft, but it does also pill a lot, which I guess is sort of to be expected with Superwash Merino but it definitely isn't my favourite. With that being said, this colour called Lunar Rock is so pretty. 
It's like a really pale bluish grey. It's really unique. This bind off is done with an opal sock yarn. I don't remember the colour number, it'll be in the description. I have got a full sock to show in this sock yarn later. In fact, here it is. So, this sock is the Kiggy sock, also by Yuka. This is a sock that I really regret making in the yarn that I did. As I mentioned, this is an opal sock yarn, and I really, really love these socks. They have this really pretty sort of quilted design on the leg, and then this contrast cuff, which sits inside the cast on edge. So this is added on afterwards. So they are knitted cuff down, but then you pick up stitches and knit this extra inside optional cuff, sort of bottom up the end. The heel flap is a twisted broken rib, which is a little bit different and really cute. And along the top of the foot, they have this slip stitch rib, which I think is really pretty. So I love these socks and I would totally wear them all the time. Apart from this color, it's just too bright for me to comfortably pair with the loss of my wardrobe. And so they just don't get as much wear as they should, which is really sad because I think they are really, really lovely. As I said, the main color is opal, but the cream I think is Drops Fable and this bluey gray is the Cascade Heritage Solids in Lunar Rock that I showed for the previous pair. So I used those two yarns, both the, this pair of socks and the previous pair, just because I think the colours look really pretty together. Here is another newer pair. This is the Forest Trail pair of socks from 52 Weeks of Socks Volume 2. It is number 29 in the book. This is what the picture looks like. As you can see in the book, it has contrast toes and cuffs, whereas my pair has contrast heels and toes, just because I think this looks really cute. The yarn that I used for this sock is actually hand dyed. I only have a couple of pairs of hand dyed socks, it's not really my thing, um, but I really like this particular sock set. This is from Olivia and Oliver Fibers, and it was one of those sets that comes with a larger, I think 100 gram skein of a main color and then a mini of a contrast color for these contrasting details. This main color is called Feather, and then the one I use for the heels and toes is called Cacao. They're both really warm pinkish browns, which aren't my usual colour palette, but I do find these surprisingly easy to wear. And I think that this particular pattern really looks nice with the hand dyed base. It just sort of adds a pretty texture to the overall sock without competing with the busyness of the hand dyed sock yarn. I really like these and I find them super wearable. This is a small thing and I, I don't think this is the best sock to show it on because I'm not sure it's actually visible on this darker heel flap, but it has a slip stitch heel flap and then it has, is it garter? I think it's garter along the edge of the heel flap and I always think this looks really nice. I've knitted a few pairs of socks that have this detail. Um, maybe I'll remember to show it with one of the other pairs in a light colour. Here I have another pair of DK socks and these are also by Yuka. This is the Rookie Winter sock. And I guess this is also hand dyed, so maybe have slightly more hand dyed socks than I thought. This one is from Emma's Yarn. Wait, I will check the yarn name. This is the Emma's Yarn Simply Spectacular DK, and the colour is called Morel of the Story, um, which I think is a really cute name. It's a really purpley grey colour. You can see it's not too busy, which is the sort of hand dyed I like the most. I was really intrigued by this yarn because it is a little bit trickier in general, I find, to uh, choose DK weight yarns that still have nylon in. Obviously the socks are thicker so they'll wear better anyway, but I still want to reach for nylon ones where possible, and this one does have nylon content in it. Yuka does this sock pattern as both the regular fingering weight version and also this DK weight version, so you can do whichever you prefer. I do find it a little bit hard to see the cables in this sock yarn, which is kind of a shame. They are faux cables, so they're done with increases and decreases rather than any actual cabling. And then there's broken rib along the front and back of the leg and a half twisted rib cuff. The heel flap on this one, I think is just stockinette. There are no slip stitches. And these were definitely sort of less than a day per sock type projects. Really fast and really fun. I think they would make very good gifts. Oh, one thing is I have worn this pair quite a bit. And you can definitely see the sock yarn is fading on the sole of the foot compared to the top of the foot. This is visible on a few of my pairs of hand dyed socks. I think it's just sort of something that happens. I do hand wash all of my socks, so it's not something that's happened from machine washing. Most of these are super washed, but I don't particularly want to risk it, and so I do uh, wash all of them by hand. This is another of my oldest pairs of socks, and it has totally been through it. These have been worn a bunch. 
This pattern is called Keisler and this is from 52 Weeks of Socks Volume 1. It is by Rachel Coopy and here is how it looks in the book. It doesn't have any larger pictures which is kind of a shame. I think that for this pair um, I knitted them on 2.5mm needles which as I mentioned is true of some of my oldest pairs of socks and I also ended up taking a pattern repeat out of the pattern as written in 52 Weeks of Socks. I think that the pattern only includes pretty large stitch counts. I believe the smallest might be 72 stitches. It's certainly more stitches than I would expect for the smaller size. And so I took one full repeat out. I know a lot of people did the same. Now in hindsight, on 2.25mm needles, I could totally have got away with 72 stitches. Quite a few of my pairs of socks are that sort of stitch count. But yes, that's something that I did. Now it has this ribbed pattern which alternates plain rib and then this sort of um, lacy rib. It's quite unusual and I do think it looks nice. The heel flap is just a regular slip stitch heel flap. And the yarn that I use for these is Drops Nord, which is a very, very affordable wool and nylon sock yarn that also has quite a bit of alpaca in it. The alpaca makes it really fluffy so the socks feel very luxurious. Um, I don't think you can see very well on camera, but these socks have felted the most out of any of my socks, particularly sort of um, towards the toe. Like, they're pretty much fully felted. And I know a lot of people do ask me how I avoid my socks felting. To be honest, I'm sure washing it by hand does help, but I think it's just something that's going to happen if you wear your socks a bunch, and I don't find that this particularly bothers me. They're not uncomfortable to wear or anything, so I just keep wearing them the same but I think that this sort of sock yarn does definitely felt more easily. With that being said, it's a very soft and luxurious feeling sock yarn, so if you want to make some really fancy feeling socks on a budget, I do recommend this one. It's really nice. Okay, so here is the next pair of socks. The pattern that I followed for this is called Stella, and it is by Inke Yavakangas. This pattern is actually free on Ravelry. Um, I really enjoyed it, so I'd recommend checking it out if you are interested. It is knitted cuff down, and it has stockinette on the back of the leg and this very sort of simple lace pattern on the front of the leg. If you haven't knitted lace before, you might think that this looks kind of complicated. I promise this is as easy as lace gets. This is another one that would make a great first lace project for sure. I knitted this on 2.25mm needles. It has a regular slip stitch heel flap. And my favourite detail on these socks is between the twisted rib cuff and this stockinette on the back. It has this pearl row, I think that looks so cute. The yarn that I used for this pair of socks is I think called Toast by Debbie Bliss. I think it's a Lovecrafts exclusive. I did buy a few balls of sock yarn from Lovecrafts last summer and this is one of them. It's one of those sock yarns that has a little bit of cashmere in it. Um, it is very soft feeling as I mentioned before. I'm not really convinced that the softness of this yarn comes from the 10% cashmere. I think it is just softer in terms of the wool chosen as well but it does feel very luxurious. I haven't worn these socks for many full days walking in boots because I'm a little bit nervous about how it would wear, but it certainly looks fine after having these for the best part of a year. This next pair is from another pattern by Yucca. These are the Anemone socks. These are the only pair of socks in this video without a heel flap. Heel flap and gusset is my favorite sock construction, whether I'm working cuff down or toe up, but these ones do have a short row heel. This does sort of confirm to me that short row heels are not my favourite. They're not as strong, but also I find that they don't give me enough fabric for my heel. I don't like having the top of the sock stretched out too much, where the sock goes over my heel, and that happens with this pair, which is a real shame because the lace pattern on these is really beautiful. Hopefully you can see what it looks like. So it has this very simple sort of floral looking lace, but the real standout feature is that it has this scalloped pattern, I don't know if you can see. So it has stockinette here and reverse stockinette on the sides and then scallops where it joins with slip stitches to sort of outline them. It's a really beautiful detail and it's what makes this particular sock pattern so special. The yarn that I used for this pair is from Izia, it's the standard Izia sock. It's also a sock yarn with a lot of alpaca in it, so it is texturally very similar to the Drops Nord I can't really comment on whether this one felt as much because I haven't worn it quite so much. It is a new pair of socks, but I'm looking at it now and there is definitely quite a bit of felting near the toe, so I assume this will behave similarly. It is a really luxurious sock yarn though. I do strongly recommend it. 
Again, this hasn't been worn as much as I would like it to be, partly because of the colour, it's another of those brighter pairs that I just don't reach for. Which is a real shame because the design and the yarn are a couple of my favourites. Okay, so this next pair is another of my own designs. These are the Mountain Walk socks, and these are knitted in Mondim from Retrosaria. You can find this pattern on my Ravelry. It's very easy, cuff down, and you can see it has this sort of cable rib pattern to it, but all of the cables are faux cables, which I enjoy because it means I don't have to slow down so much when I'm knitting, so this pattern comes together much faster than I think it would if it was using actual cables. This yarn is 100% wool, so it does not have any nylon in. And this is the pair I mentioned in a few of my videos where I wore through them in about five wears. I think that's just how nylon free sock yarn is for me. I do put my socks through a lot. I don't know if you can see. This toe has actually been darned. I miraculously found this darning wool that is the exact same colour as the one I used to knit the sock, so that's cool. But I do need to go back because I found the corresponding point on the other toe is also almost fully worn through, and so I need to go back and darn that before I get a hole in it, since it's much easier to do a preventative darning situation than have to try and neatly sew up a hole afterwards. Anyway, cuff down, it has a rolled cuff, slip stitch heel flap, wedge toe, basically just all the stuff that I enjoy the most in a sock since it is my own design. And this is a pattern that I would really like to revisit and make another pair of, out of something perhaps a little bit more hard wearing. Okay, so this next pair might be my favourite pair of socks. It's probably the pair that I've put the most effort into. These are the, I think they're called the Erica socks again, um, but this time the pattern is by Yuka. These socks might be my favourite both because uh, I really like the pattern, I worked really hard on them, it took me a long time, and I also love this yarn. Perhaps you can see the pattern best if I hold it like this. It is really just a regular cabled sock, but I really like these cables. I like this squiggly twisted rib on the outside, I like the big central cable. The back of the leg just has broken rib, and it has a unique heel flap construction with a different pattern of slip stitches to the other socks I've made. I actually don't like this heel flat quite so much, but it doesn't take away from the sock overall. The yarn that I particularly like is, it's called Socks Yeah from Coop Knits, bit of a strange name. I believe it does also come in a DK weight version if you're interested in that. I just have a grey colour, it comes in a lot of really pretty shades, so I'm not quite sure why I knitted mine in the plain grey, but it is really lovely. It's not scratchy at all, and yet it still wears surprisingly well. I also think that it's great for cables, it's really round um, and looks really pretty. The cables are really visible, and something else that I quite like about it is that it's definitely a thinner sock yarn. So if you would like to knit a pattern that has only sort of bigger stitch counts included, um, this would be a great yarn to use, especially if you're going to knit on smaller needles. It's probably my favourite sock yarn that I've used so far. I'm a little bit nervous about showing this pair in this video because this is the pair that definitely looks um, the least new, let's say. These are the Una socks and they are also from 52 Weeks of Socks. Perhaps you can see the lace pattern. These are by Karen Borrell um, and here is what they look like in the book. This is a particularly popular pattern within the first 52 Weeks of Socks book and for good reason. They really just have that classic lace sock look and since I knitted them in the white they do make me feel very nostalgic. They remind me quite a lot of the sorts of sort of chunky white lace socks that I used to wear when I was at primary school. The lace pattern's pretty easy and you will remember it after a couple of repeats I think so it's a good fun sock to knit. The yarn that I used for these is from West Yorkshire Spinners. It is the signature four ply and I really like this sock yarn. It's pretty affordable, it wears really really well. I think it has a certain percentage of blue face lester in it, um, it's other than that just regular non-specified wool and nylon. The only thing is the colour range isn't that great, they tend to be very bright vibrant colours like a bright red and a bright green which is not really something that I'm going to wear a lot. This is the completely white colour so it's not cream, it is a white white, it's called marshmallow, 
and it looked very pretty but it has just become a bit discoloured over time from wearing it a bunch with dark coloured shoes for long days out. So yeah, I definitely recommend this yarn, not in the marshmallow colourway unless you want it to be a little bit high maintenance though. And with that we are coming to the last of my 17 pairs of socks in this video. This I think is another pair of socks from 52 Weeks of Socks Volume 2. I think the pattern is called La Colc. I do not know how to pronounce that. I think the book says it's the name of a beach. It is by Lotta H. Lutgren. This is what they look like in the book with contrast heels, toes and cuffs. I chose this pattern because I had this yarn already and I wanted to choose a pattern that would suit it. It's a really, really simple pattern that I think works especially well with these sorts of hand dyed yarns. It just adds a little bit of texture and doesn't compete with it. I think it's really lovely. The yarn is again from Ella's Yarn, this time it is fingering weight, and the colour is called It's Casual. I know I said I have trouble wearing a lot of my blue socks, not this particular pair. I find that the shade of blue actually looks really cute with jeans, um, it sort of coordinates well with them, so I find it a lot easier to pair with different outfits, and these socks get worn a lot. It's knitted cuff down, it has this sort of wider rib at the top, slip stitch pattern. It's kind of like a mixture of um, slip stitches and broken rib. And then I have a regular slip stitch heel flap on here. Now, I think what I said about these socks, if I remember correctly, is that I followed the pattern from the cast on top edge to about here. And then I put the book away and I went away somewhere and I didn't photograph the pattern to take with me like I normally do. So I sort of freestyled the rest of the sock. And so most of this sock is not knitted to the pattern, but looking at pictures, I think it's pretty similar to how it works out in the pattern as well. So yes, these are definitely one of my current favourites. I think they're so pretty. And it is one of the main pairs where I don't know how much it shows up on camera again, but I think the hand dyed sock yarn has really faded a little bit on the sole of the foot. I don't particularly mind, but it's something to consider if you're super attached to really bright and saturated colours. Okay, so that is it. We have made it through my 17 pairs of socks from within the last year. I hope you enjoyed it. I really would like to film some more thorough sock yarn reviews where I talk about the performance of the yarn, especially on the older pairs that I've had a little bit more wear out of already. Um, talk about that in more detail. But I wanted to do an overview so that you could see how many pairs of socks I've missed in a year. This is slightly crazy. I feel like this upcoming year will definitely have fewer pairs to show. And that's okay. Last year I was particularly excited about knitting socks and I had a lot more free time and so I've made a lot and this year I'll do fewer. I don't need so many, I already have a lot. If you do have any questions about any of these socks, do feel free to ask them in the comment section and I will leave a list of all of the patterns and the yarn and yarn colours in the description if you'd like to check that. That is going to be a large task that I'm not particularly looking forward to but I will do it for you. Thank you very much for watching. I will be back again soon with another video. Goodbye.